Welcome to Shark Select. And welcome to another episode of Shard Select! I am your host, the lovely Winstolf, and I'm joined, as ever, which is my blessing and my curse, by the angel on my shoulder, that's Ryan, and the devil in my pants, it's Stu. I mean, on my shoulder. Mm, yeah. Yeah? I'm sure you both agree at the moment. It's freaking humid in the UK. It's, it's muggy, guys. It is so sweaty. It's fucking grim. Mm. I, don't, I don't like it. Gosh, it's hot. How do you... Gosh, it's so hot. <laughs> Gosh, it's hot. <laughs> Might have to take off our clothes. Uh, oh, it's so <laughs> steamy. And I never found my bunny rabbit boy. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to do a, a, ASMR here. What the hell are you two doing? Oh, that's... Uh, looks funny. Oh, so it's ASMR versus Looney Tunes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I see. It's so hot and sweaty. Okay, that's my ASMR for the episode done. Do you want to go, Ryan? Steamy. Do you want to go, Stu? <laughs> uh, Jared. Oh, oh, you could have warned me before I did that one. That was pure filth. All right. Clapping all over it with his big... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was talking all... ASMR, so you're going to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was dead sexy, Stu, you ignore him. Okay, so last episode we started on an epic quest of tearing all the sort of mainstream big consoles from Sega, Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft, except we were so in detail and we got so into it that we kind of ran out of time. Mm. We got as far as the end of Nintendo, I believe, didn't yeah. we? With the Switch, where we, both, where we all agreed that the Switch has got a lot of potential to be a good console. So there we go. So just as a catch-up, for a treat for you lovely viewers or listeners or downloaders or summoners, how else do you get podcasts? Can you summon them? Yeah. You have to draw a pentagram on the ground and put like a thick boy model at each corner and it summons Ryan. I know that much. Mm. Yeah, you put a grapefruit in one corner, a thick boy in the other. A picture of the Tetris man in the other. Yeah. A monkey tail butt plug in one. Yeah. And I don't know. Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas the Tank yeah. Engine in the other, yeah. And it summons <laughs> us three. We're all very confused, like, why have you summoned us? <laughs> but, but, is, is the podcast not enough? Why have you summoned us? And then yeah. You can make us do a live podcast trapped in a pentagram. Yeah, just can't get out. Like a circle of salt. Exactly, you do a circle of salt. And a, or in our case, a circle of grapefruit juice. So you can't get out <laughs> until it dries. Anyway, um, back to the uh, subject at hand. So we have a five-tier system, which I don't think we described in the last episode, did we? We just sort of launched it to the console reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a five-tier system. At the bottom is the fart category. And then, and these are the consoles which, sadly, we did not rate very highly. It doesn't mean they're necessarily bad. Different different people may get different mileage. But us three shots select people, well, we judged, and we judged harshly, let me say. So in the fart tier, we have the Nintendo Wii. You. Wii U, yeah. Thank you. The Wii U. Joining it in the fart category, we have... Unfortunately for Nintendo, two of its other consoles, the GameCube, which none of us really played and therefore couldn't really judge, and the N64, which we did play, but we thought the PlayStation 1 shot all over it. If I said to you, name a, name a good game that came out on the GameCube. I would say... Apart from Twin Snakes. First Evil 4. Sorry? Yeah, that's not very good. Though. <laughs> that wasn't the best one, though, was it? Well, a lot of people say, in my opinion, it's the best one, but a lot of people do think it is. So we also, and also in the fat category, was an unfortunate Sega, the Sega Saturn, which sounded a bit of a revival in the retro scene, but mm, mm. It, it, the poor thing was a failure for a reason. It doomed Sega to death, really. That was the fat class, and the class above that is the meh class. For those who aren't from Northern England, meh is generally a sound that means I don't care for it one way or the other. Mm. Like it's you take it or leave it. It, it, it exists. Yeah. yeah? Uh, although I would have wanted it a bit higher myself, we are a democracy here on Shout Select, and the Sega Dreamcast ended up in this category mm-hmm. as Sega's last console. Had some good games, not many people played it. At least that we know, anyway. I've got one, though, it's lovely. Then the NES was also in there, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Famicom. That's in there because whilst it was pretty revolutionary in the US at the time, 
Um, the games, a lot of the games are, haven't aged very well. And in the UK, they were quite rare to come by because mm. we all had its little staple mate down here in C class, the Master System, which was Sega's yeah. 8 bit beast, uh, which has Sonic and Alex Kidd and other such games. Um, so that's in, down there as well. Again, just because it's aged quite badly, a lot of the games are not great for it. Yeah. It's got some gems, not saying it's not, but a lot of the, age, a lot of the games have aged badly, like Stu's face. Thanks. And, uh, Oh, you're welcome. And also in here, we have the Nintendo Wii, because it's a console that none of us three really enjoyed that much, but yeah. we couldn't deny its cultural impact. Yeah. And the fact that it saved Nintendo from almost certain doom. So fair play, you know, fair play. Next up, we have the OK class, which says what it says what it does on the tin, really. Does, yeah. does what it says on the tin? Says what it does? Does what it says. Paralysis? Paralysis. <laughs> uh, and that's got uh, such gems as the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis in there, which was a good stalwart console of everyone's childhood. Oh, solid, yeah. Of solid our age. Console. And it's uh, Nintendo counterpart, the SNES slash SNES slash Super Nintendo, which, although superior to the Mega Drive hardware wise, um, I think we had probably had more fun with the Mega Drive growing up, growing up, didn't we? But again, we can't deny their importance. And also in that class is the Switch, which is a good console with a good future ahead of it, but everything's too expensive. Yeah, massive price tag. Everything is so expensive for it. Final Fantasy X for 35 quid. It came out in 2001 or something. Good God. Well, that's where we're up to, isn't it? Yeah. So, shall we? what do I do first? Do I tackle Sony or Microsoft first? It's coming down a list of Sony, <coughs> isn't it? Next. I believe so. You happy with that, everyone? Sure. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. All yep. right. Let's cheat. The Stu Horn has sounded. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Thank you, Stu Horn. All right, so let's go to 1995. We see it's grey. It's a box. It's the PlayStation 1. When this console came along, it blew everything else out of the water yeah. instantly. Like, we were used to the Mega Drive and stuff like that. And when we saw the 3D graphics and games, it was like, oh, my God, yeah. it looks so real. Of course, by today's standards, it looks like some horrible polygon block men. Yeah. Um, nightmare hell beast. But back then, oh man. Back in the day when Gran Turismo came out, I remember saying to my cousin at the time, well, cousin at the time, I've been saying to my cousin, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is a going to be my cousin. cousin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, it's like, how can the graphics get any better than this? This is it. This is the peak. Yeah, we're peak, man. Peak yeah. graphics. When you look well, at, to be fair though, Gran Turismo, and Gran Turismo Two, the graphics now you look back, you're like, that's a good effort. For no, it is. It, they bit. still look yeah. good. But anyway, it came out in Japan in 1994 and 1995 in America, and then 1995 in Europe a bit afterwards. Apparently, it was the first computer entertainment platform to ship over 100 million units, which it reached nine years after its launch. And in, two, and in 2000, they, a, a slim version came out, had a little telly on the, oh, it did, on yeah. the other side of the telly, lid. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted one of them. Yeah, I did too. They're quite rare, apparently. Really expensive uh, as well now. Uh, retro scene, isn't it? <laughs> when a normal PS1 you can get for 30 quid. The best thing about PS1s was, at least for us high school kids growing up, you could easily chip it, like mod it, and then play pirate games on it. Yeah. yeah. I knew a guy in school, he was like the fucking games dealer. Like, if you're in with this guy... You would get games on tap, like five quid for a copy of games. Like great, so you you, you get your, your like your weekly pocket money or allowance if you're from the states. And instead of spending it on sensible things like I don't know fashionable clothes, you spend it. Like, <laughs> Was that? Oh, oh no! The fashion police, there he is. <laughs> it's because you just admitted that you like you bought pirated games. Yeah, the no, it's, are it's for the you. cops. The cops, get down! The police uh, are coming. Get down! For you. <laughs> <laughs> get down! <laughs> Pirate games from the nineties. Yeah. Anyway, um, so instead of spending money on like things that probably would have been better, like fashionable clothes or hygiene products, I became a smelly teenager and bought cheap games for five pounds on Memorex CDs. And I tell you what, there were some classics played for peanuts. Yeah. The only problem was probably is if you become a retro gamer later in life and want them again. And you've lost your original PS1. You have to buy the official games because I lost. I lost my PS1. <laughs> the chip we had in ours blew up one day. Yes, I know somebody else whose PS who's the aerial got struck by lightning and it blew the PS1 up. <laughs> no, it just turned it on one day and it's a big massive flash and loads of smoke came out of the back where the chip was. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Whereas yeah. mine survived like a fucking beast. Mine was a Trojan, a true Trojan amongst consoles. It was a Spartan, even. <laughs> PlayStation, what is your profession? That's what it was like. Uh, anyway, some games, that, famous games for the PS One. We've got quite a lot to choose from. Crash Bandicoot's one to three. He kind of became the unofficial mascot of PlayStation, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that bozzy jorts wearing maniac. Uh, medieval one and two. Ah, uh, medieval. Yeah, that's good. Though. About a skeleton man. Uh, that's, that's getting a remake, guys. Of course it is. They're all getting a remake now. It's all, After the success of Crash, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all Sony's old, uh, old stable friend, all stable partners are getting remade. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, which of course is a game that we we all know and love. Mm. Uh, starring Solid Snake. Uh, Resident Evil's 1 to 3, which were awesome. And uh, for the JRPG fans, it was a very good console because you had Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 9. And anyone who says they don't like 8, fuck off. It's a good game, all right? Fight me. <laughs> don't really fight me. You might beat me. But yeah, so that's the PS1. Now, um, do you want me to go first and talk about how I would score the PS1? Also, I just want another game oh, I on. used to play a lot. I mean, well, I mean, she used to play a lot with Road Rash Jailbreak. Oh, yes. That was a good one, that one. Yeah, Road Rash, game, games were, Road Rash games were awesome on every console. But my favourite version of Road Rash was the... It was like the original formula of Road Rash, but on the PS1. Do you ever play that one? It's just like a Mega Drive game, but with better graphics and massive. Like, you could customise bikes and all sorts. Uh, maybe. That was the best version of Road Rash for me. I was actually looking at... I was actually thinking of buying it off eBay the other day. It's going for, goes for about a tenner. It's not too bad, really. No. I might buy that. I think I had the best wrestling games on oh, PS1 do, as well. Do, WWF Attitude. Yeah, Attitude. Yeah, that was, was so good. WF Smackdown was Smackdown. great pants. That was pants, but the that, know your role and shut your mouth were both good. I remember when me and Tim made like a gang of freaking weird wrestlers modelled after teachers and stuff because we were kids and we were in school. And it crashed once where one of them was modelled after Tim's year four teacher, who was a balding middle aged man, was sat on another wrestler's back. Do you know they move when they sit on the back and they pull the neck, pull their heads up, like bend yeah. their necks? But it crashed, and he was just stuck in the animation. But the guy's head wasn't moving, so it just looked like he was humping him on the ground. And it's the <laughs> funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I think me and Tim actually nearly had a stroke from laughing at him. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh my god, it was so funny. I'm actually just laughing thinking about it. So, any other games for the PS4 which you want to mention? Because I did just breeze through those. Any other classics? Do you? Future Cop LAPD. As mentioned on the split screen episode, which yeah. you and Stuart well, did. The majority of the split screen episode, a lot. Did feature PS1 games. Well, fair enough. It was the era, wasn't it? Twisted yeah. Metal World Tour. That was yeah. a good game. Vigilante uh, 8. Yeah, but, oh, that was good. Uh, the Odd World games I loved. Destruction I spent the time playing there. Yes. And Destruction Derby Raw. Oh, Raw was really good. Was that on the PS1 or the PS2? Yeah, right, right at the end of the PS1. It was. Oh, yeah, fair had, enough. Had a well good theme tune as well. How did the ghost you sing it for me? Uh, something like, destroy, destroy, destroy. And then about guitars and stuff. Do the guitars. I can't remember where the tune went now. I just remember that oh, bit. <laughs> what a fucking cop out. That's quite good though. I enjoyed that. Thank you, Stu. So, do you want to go first with scoring this bad boy or do you want you, want you two want to go? You can go, sorry. Okay. Historical importance. No one can deny the historical importance of the uh, PlayStation. It brought an end to the Nintendo versus Sega era of the console was by booting Sega straight off the... Uh, well, it didn't boot it straight off the stage, but it certainly put it on its ass. Mm. Um... It has a fantastic lineup of games, good controller, love those memory cards. Sorry, guys, but this might have to be my 5 out of 5. For me, the PS1 is shot tear, shot tear, shot tear, shot tear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> for about you, that's you. Thing. Four for me. You're going to go with the 4 out of 5. Can you t- just talk through your reasoning on um, this one? I think that uh, some of the later consoles are better than it, but it's better than stuff we've rated so far, so far. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Ryan, your thoughts? Ooh, it's tough. The OG PS1 was a bad boy. Was it thick enough? Well, that's the question. Did do you think it was a thick console? I'd like to give it a half, but I can't, so no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my guns out. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Okay, fair enough. The year 2000. Uh, oh, what happened yeah. in the year 2000? The Millennium Bug happened. Yes, oh, we all died. Yeah, planes and fell out of the sky. Cyborgs rose from the ruins of mankind. It was the it was the year two thousand, the year of Alien Out Farm, or was that afterwards? Oh, it could have been. Oh, yeah. oh wait, no, it was like Alien Out Farm was before then. Just to rewind back to good games on the PS One, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah, 
just got thinking of those games from the music we were talking about. Yeah, yeah so the year 2000, it was the Millennium, it was the, the Millennium Bug, the Cyborgs rose from the ashes of mankind and did weird things with grapefruits to each other. Yeah. Uh, they gave up in the end and went home. There was nothing really for them. And then the PS2 came out, which is um, obviously from Sony again. It was released in Japan on March the 4th in 2000, North America in October, and Europe and Australia in November, because we always used to be the last to get things back in the day. Yeah. I don't think it works like that anymore. I think we all get it at once now, don't we? Yeah. 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 And, yeah, and of, I say, and it's, um, I think at this point, the best selling console of all time, if I'm not mistaken, because they only discontinued it a few years ago. It, went, it had a really long run. Oh, classic PS2. Yeah. It's, the beast. It was, of course, the uh, sixth, sixth generation console, whatever that means. And it's rival to the Dreamcast, the GameCube, and um, the Microsoft's almighty giant Xbox. Yeah, but the Xbox wasn't released at the same time, was it? No, but they're all part. They're all part of the same. Yeah, no, but the PS2 had a good run yeah, before yeah. the Xbox. The Xbox got pinned towards the end, didn't it? Yeah. So we could say it vanquished the Dreamcast straight off the bat. Yeah. It pushed the poor GameCube down a bit, and then had a good battle with the Xbox. That's yeah. the way it went. It's real, isn't it? Teabagged the Dreamcast. It pretty well, it did more than teabagged. It teabagged it to death. <laughs> Just like teabagged it so much, it skull caved in. <laughs> Sounds grim, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, yeah, so the PS2 was pretty special for console because it, op- it offered full backwards compatibility with the PS1. Oh, yeah. Including memory cards, which is pretty yeah. cool. And also, it had one thing which the Dreamcast and the GameCube did not, a motherfucking DVD player, son. So anyway, yeah. So yes, it's the best-selling video game console of all time. Guess how many million units over its lifetime it sold? 200? Mm. Sure. 250. No, nah, it, was, it wasn't as high as that, but it was still 159 million units. is pretty impressive. Yes, yeah, good that. Yeah. That's a hell of a lifetime for the PS2. That, and apparently, um, over 3,800 game titles released, 1.5 billion copies overall sold of games for it. So the PS2, they had the DualShock 2 controller, which was a slightly refined version of the PS1 DualShock, but I couldn't really see the difference. It was black. Yeah, it was black. All right. <laughs> and apart and there from the was little, color, um, there was little. Nubbles on the analog, so you did fingers and slip off. Nubbles? I think the PS1 one had nubbles. Did it? Yeah, man. Uh, rumble in it, didn't it? Rumble pack in it. Didn't the PS1 one not have that? Don't think it did, you know. Oh, there you go, then. There's your upgrade right there. So, famous games that came out for the PS2, Me- Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. Yeah, the contra- uh, controversy that followed Metal Gear 2. Um, because Raiden had his bum out. Yeah, it was yeah. just like... Top was his clothes were too tight, and like the demo disc. Hang and on, a minute. Was... do you just say it's a controversy because his clothes were too no, tight? Well, I'm getting to that. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> because no, like all the demo disc and everything featured should in the reviews was yes. all about solid yeah. state, and then the demo disc came out, and you, with you. you went to the you're on that tanker. And then they released a second demo disc to see what happened after the first demo den ended, and you continued to solid state. You went through the hangar, you got to Metal Gear Ray. And then the ship blew up, and then oh, lo and behold, you're playing his riding for the rest of the game. That's and it's right. Like, who's this bloke? He's a whingy, long-haired rookie guy who just complained to his missus all through the game. Yeah. Um, see, why well, I thought you were going to go with that? I thought you were going to send some kind of Victorian prude, and his clothes were far too tight. <laughs> I say, <laughs> it, it kind of reminded me of one does not listen to rap. That's no, just where they just drop. Just drop a whole new character on you without yeah, mentioning it was, or putting it anywhere. It's peak Kojima, though, isn't it? He I know, me- yeah, but... He messed with everyone's expectations. Uh, yeah. That's Metal Gear Solid 3, famously, you played as Big Boss when he was a younger man, a.k.a. just Solid Snake again, but in the 60s. Yeah, but I, I, actually, I wanted to play as Solid Snake, not these other characters. He pretty much was Solid Snake. It just, yeah, but he was, but not, he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had all the all silly baddies as well. Metal Gear Solid is famous for its silly baddies. You can't really take offence at them at this point, I think. And by the third entry, although the B-Man was silly. I did like the B-Man very much. Yeah. I did like Revolver also a lot when he goes, Row! and to some of his mates, like he's some kind of little <laughs> sexy monster. <Yeah. laughs> hey, I'm Revolver also lot. That's his full name as well, isn't it? Mr. R. Ocelot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, no. His name- <laughs> That's his middle name. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> he's... His name is Reverend Olver. Meow. Also, look. Um, because he's a priest. Did you not, did not mention that? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Moving on. Very swiftly, because that was a dead end joke. If I was, it was yeah. uh, Final Fantasy X and twelve, and probably eleven, but I don't really care about eleven because it was an MMO. Came out on the PS2. Um, they were 
they pushed the graphics of the PS2 to its very limits, I think. Squaresoft knew how to do that back in the day before they became Screenix and just remade Final Fantasy VII all the time. Silent Hill 2, which was some people say is the best survival horror game of all time. Too scary, can't play it. True story. Yeah. Um, I got to a bit where Pyramid Head's chasing me around, trying to hit me with a sword. I was like, you know what? Now I'm done with this. I hope you've mentioned my favourite games for the PlayStation 2 on that list. Um, well, yeah, just time split list off the internet. Uh, yeah, well, let's mention it now. Time Splitters 1, 2, and 3. 3 was by far the best, in my opinion. Yeah, it had a more flowing storyline. Time Splitters 3 had a really funny campaign. Yeah. With what's his name? Sergeant Cortez. Yeah, but it didn't sound, it sounded like Vin Diesel. He finished was Vin Diesel, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And the, the bit with the ghost god I always remember, when he gets kicked in the nuts <laughs> by, the, by the girl. No, that's later on. Uh, I was watching a little bit, actually, on YouTube before, and he's like... It's like, he's playing as Cortez, and then Cortez jumps down, and he goes, get down! Shoots someone, it's like, whoa, whoa. He's like, ghosts. Ghosts? <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> so how do you see him? He's like, ghost goggles. And then it cuts <laughs> back to the one you're playing as, he looks down, he's looking at his gun, and he goes, ghost gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you have to play, you play through with your future self with a ghost gun, and you get to the end, and then he carries on and then you have to go back and collect a ghost gun and yeah. run through the same bit again and it plays the exact same video at the end which is pretty funny what's the, it's a time loop. what's the famous line from that one uh, hey I need to take your robot why last guy took mine <laughs> no, the, the famous line from time splitters was time to split That's and then everybody that, hates it yeah I'll just ignore it <laughs> uh, also on the PS2 which I think would be hung if we didn't mention GTA's Grand Theft Auto's 3 to San Andreas so that's three, Vice City and San Andreas, which mm. were massively ambitious games for the time. Yeah. But again, they pushed the PS2 to the And one, um, Killzone. Killzone. Killzone, gra- Killzone, yeah, Killzone was graphically insane, wasn't it, for the PS2? I remember my PS2 begging for death when I played that game. <laughs> what were the I Gran Turismo on? One. Two. Oh, Gran Turismo 4 is my favourite recent game of all time. Yeah, three and four. There's right? 800 cars on Gran Turismo 4, and I got most of them. It took a long time. Okay, next on the list. God of War series one and two, not all of them, but God of War one, God of War one and two were big sellers for the PS2. Guess what? He's a grumpy Spartan man called Traitors. Yeah. And he's got this, <laughs> he's got these swords on a chain, and he kills monsters a lot. And, and he's so angry, demigods. You know, demigods. He's so angry, he just kills everything. So let's get to uh, Mark in the old PS2. Then I'll quite say as well, they released a slim version in two thousand and four. Mm. Anyway. Uh, PS2, historical importance, best-selling console ever made. That's got to be important, right? Yeah. Had some very good games on it. Again, good controller. I can't deny its superiority, but for me, the the, the nostalgic nostalgic land frothing just isn't as good. So I'm going to give it a four out of five. What do you guys think? It's five for me. Ooh. Can you explain your thoughts? Straight up. Best-selling console of all time. Most played console for me. Yeah. What, is, what game did you play the most? Time Splitters, with the new Crash Bandicoots that were on there. Oh, yeah. They really weren't as good as the classic ones. And backwards compatible. Yeah, true. What do you think, Stu? Uh, well, I was tempted to say five, but then I was just thinking, I think I played Xbox more once that came out. You see, you're, you're doing it tactically again. You know, don't compare it to the other consoles. Just say what That's you think of it. That's the whole point. What are you talking about? In that no, series? No, the, no, the comparison happens naturally off the scores at the end. No, I don't think it does. You, 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 you're being too tactical. No. No, go on, follow your heart, follow your heart. Because I think putting some at five is pretty special, so I'm going to say give it a four. I think, no, five. We're going for the five. We're going, five. We're, 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 are you locking it in? Yeah. All right, she's locked it in like a machine. Wow, there you go, it's our first S, folks, it's the PS2. Next up there, we move on to 2007. Um, think, can I remember anything interesting that happened in 2007? I can't. Uh, it was a year. I don't know, it was cloudy. Cloudy one day. I wasn't a kid anymore. I had to go to work, and I wasn't even in college anymore. That sucked. Yeah, I was that working was a, full time then. That was well. a big bag of poo right out of somewhere right off a horse's bum bum. So yeah, nothing much happened now, apart from the PS3 came out, guys. It was officially announced at E3 2005, apparently, <clears throat> and it was released at the end of 06. But it came to the Europe in 07, and it was the first console to use the mighty Blu-ray disc format. Ah, yes, invented by a, by a sad man called Ray. Blu ray. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. Honestly, like Wikipedia, it is. Yeah, yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah. But if, it's, if, you can, if you can't find it, it's because the internet's censoring us. Hashtag censor, shout select. The console was the first PlayStation. I'm just going to read straight off Wikipedia like a shill here. I'll start doing that. 
Uh, it had social gaming services, including the PlayStation Network. So it's the first PlayStation to have that sort of thing going on. Uh, uh, um, PlayStation Live. Yeah, uh, exactly. And it had some kind of co- connectivity with the PSP and Vita. Uh, 2009 had the Slim model released, and I'm pretty sure there was like another s- two Slim models or something released for it. Let me read it. Slim it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there was two Slim models for that, wasn't there? It lost yeah, like a sliding tray, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. I think no, I I might have a slidey tray. I might have a num 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 little slot that ate the disc. A little mouth. Yeah, like a little console mouth. Uh, the Dual Shock Three for it was terrible. Why? It's the trigger buttons had this sort of slope thing going on, so yeah. like you, uh. they didn't feel good on your hands. It's like they tried to get normal buttons and turn them into triggers last second, uh. and it was not nice. It was didn't fit in your hand very well, and the six axis thing was completely a pointless gimmick. Uh, so I hated the DualShock 3. And I was on record. Oh, you had, to, you had to move the controller as well. Sorry, yeah, it's like, a, what's the word? Gyroscopic Yeah, that was control. why, because the Wii released in the same year, so they threw that together last minute. Yes, they did that. So the PS, PS Move as so, well. Yes, yeah, so the PS3 had uh, like Wii-like controls yeah, as well. Yeah, like a stupid... So they like, threw it together because of the Wii. They looked like colourful sex ones that you waved around your, your grand's living room. It was a bit, it was all a bit disconcerting, if I'm to be quite honest. Um, my main beef with the... P- <laughs> Stu's gone. We've lost him. Uh, famous, let's go for famous games on the PS3 first. We had God of War 3, which was... You all right, Stu? So they just light up sex ones. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. There's a sound bite if there ever was one. Standout games to the PS3 was God of War 3, which, of course, followed on for God of War 2 on the PS2. And that had really good graphics, like super shiny, almost real for the time looking graphics. Mm. And there was a whole half an hour section at the end where you could punch Zeus's head into a meaty bucket. <laughs> Not punch his head off his shoulders into a meaty bucket, but punch his face so much that his head turned into a meaty bucket. Oh, lovely. And all the blood went all over the screen. It was like, nyeh, 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 just punching, nyeh, 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 punching like that. It was savage. <laughs> I remember watching it. And you could fight Poseidon. He had horse crabs. And he had to fight his horse crabs. Poseidon. Poseidon. And that was pretty epic. I, I remember watching Stu play because I was never very good at those games. But uh, that was quite a good game to watch. I never played it. I say it again. So another game that came out for the, for the PS3 was Metal Gear Solid 4. I didn't get. I didn't like it as much. Because call me mean, but I didn't like Snake being an old man. It was kind of strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did enjoy the actual gameplay when you were playing it. It's very famous for, infamous even, for the ridiculous oh, amount of um, videos that were in it. Pure cutscenes. Pure cutscenes, especially at the end. And I kid you not, it was at least 50 minutes long at the ending. Christ. It was longer than that, it. actually. It was longer than that. And they were all like, you'd just, and you'd skip it and it'd slow to the next video. Didn't the last boss fight go on for 100 years? Like, you had to punch Old Man Ocelot to death on a tower or something. Old Man Ocelot. Uh, yeah, old, old Man, man Reverend liquid. Over. That's a lot. That's liquid sorry. Ocelot. He kept turning into sorry. liquid because of his arm. Old Man Reverend Ocelot Liquid. Ocelot. Yeah. There's something wrong there, but it was good enough. Buffy was faking it all along. Spoiler alert. If you've not played that game yet, then oh well, that's your fault. Yeah. Uh, but Wasn't there um, a cutscene at the start when it was loading? It was just snake smoking. Yeah, it was, yeah. When it was updating. Well, which it did a lot, it. which yeah. I'm going to come to in a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Kill Zones, Kill Zones two and three on the PS three yeah. as well. Kill Zone two was good. I didn't like Kill Kill Zone three as much. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I had uh, Infamous on it as well, didn't it? Where you played as that lightning blow. Yeah, and Prototype as well. Yeah, I had Prototype on. Yeah, that was on, uh, the, that was on both ones. I suppose. Console. Yeah, that's yeah. true. There the, was also that cool. motocross game. I can't remember what it was called now, but you could have like, um, oh, like motorbikes. Motorstorm, that was it. So you had motorbikes, cars, I remember it had all on one race track. Really cool mode physics. Yeah. That was the main thing I remember for that game. Yeah. They had yeah. Unchar- Uncharted, where you play a, a sassy man that ruins ancient civilizations. Uncharted. Yeah. Uh, ruins. Drathan Nake. That's the one, yeah. Drathan Nake, he's the one. Yeah. And his mate Sealy, who's just a man in a shirt who goes, Nathan! Every five minutes. I've played that game. I know he does that. Mm. I actually researched it. Had The Last of Us, which was made by the same people, Naughty Dog. Which was a really bleak game in which Ellen Page had to get somewhere and a surly man helped her. Yeah. I'd be facetious. I had a very good story. Uh, on, that, um, that wasn't Ellen Page, though, was it? Wasn't that? it was Ellen sort of, Page. No, she was no, in another game. Like yeah, she was in another game, and that was a controversy that they made the Last of Us girl look like Ellen Page. I thought it was. No, she was yeah, in a different game. Well, bugger me sideways. Wasn't, um, wasn't that, that bloke was in that game that came out on PS3 as well, it? 
ways. Just go, Sean! <laughs> uh, heavy rain. Heavy rain. Sean! <laughs> Press 8 to Sean. Yeah. Sean Simulator. That is, yeah, Where, right. Where's Sean Simulator? Yeah. That's the one. Um, yeah, so she I'm was doing, it, was beyond, that. it was beyond two Oops. souls that she was in. Oh, that game was pap. That's the game I'm sorry that I'm sure if you're a fan of that game, everyone. Uh, who else is on PS3? Go on. P A I N Pain was in. Wake yeah. of launched David Hasselhoff into things with ragdoll physics. Yeah, and you could uh, go ass first if you wanted. You could control which way he like posed. Sorry, guys. Ryan choked up a bit there when he said ass first. I was I trying to think, think he had some flashbacks to something. <laughs> I don't know entirely what. In ass first into a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> What did you say? You said diving ass first into a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful, Ryan. I love you. <laughs> Go on, Stu. You were going to say. I was saying, I think we played Pain the most on when I had the PS3. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. cheap, wasn't it? Or free. It was an arcade game, yeah. Yeah, that was. And it also had Little Big Planet, which is about a man made of sacks who <laughs> runs around. Scrotums. No, not scrotums. <laughs> hemp, hemp and sax, man. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute lunatic. My and you can create the man. world around it. Stu. <laughs> He's starting again. Off yeah. he goes. It was wanking last week. It's ball bags this week. Yeah. Control yourself. Bloody dicks galore last week. It was, wasn't it? Dicks galore. That's Stu's secret agent name. <laughs> when he's out in the field. Dicks galore. Do you read me? <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Disco Lord, do you read me? Your song quality is not very good. That's what it'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, you've got to be on the headphone now. There you go, you're back in the other one. Uh, so, let's talk judging the PS3. Uh, do you want me to go first, or do you guys want to go yeah, first? Continue to go first. Yeah. The controller was shite. Yeah. It took ages to update anything. Controversial opinion, maybe for some people, knowing that people know I love Sony now. One out of One out of five. That console was a fucking joke. One? Yeah, one. I hated the PS3. Come at me, bruh. Unless you're harder than me, then don't. Stu, what would you reckon? I, mean, I was all an Xbox boy, but I got um, a PlayStation just to fix just for the games. Exclusive. I couldn't play, yeah. Played God of War, Motorstorm, and not a lot else, really. And it just sat there gathering dust until I traded it in for uh, a 360 Elite. So yeah, all it, did right. was, all it did was update itself. Every time you turned it on, it needed an update. You'd wait for the update, just play a game then, and then that needed an update. Yeah. And this was before the days of fibre broadband here in the oh, UK, yeah. so yeah. every update took ages. Why did it update so much? Why did it need to update? Uh, no it's, idea. It's, miser- it's misery database, I think. You uh, had to keep it topped up at all the time. That's it. If you didn't play it often enough, you would be updated. It'd be absolutely massive. Exactly. Yeah. Like exactly. Four or five guys. updates in one. Yeah, you sit there this. looking like a 20 gig update and back then 20 gig update was like a, that was an all day session that was exactly so what do you think that's due knowing this knowing this as we do through hindsight and time what do you what, how would you score this bastard yeah I think I think a one as well it was ugly as well wasn't it oh don't get personal Stu good lord it looked ugly and it was it was a massive big heavy thing and it like when you it picked it up you thought it was going to break <laughs> speaking of which same big massive heavy things. The first the first run of them had backwards compatibility with the PS2. Yeah, and then and, they got rid of it. And then they got rid of it. So they get they lose further points for that. So it's still one out of five because I can't take any more off because zero out of five is just facetious. So yeah, one for Stu. What do yeah, you think? One. Yeah, I agree with all the points. Wow. Right, so, yeah. Let me just skip back over to the tier board. It's it's a real life board in real life. It's not just my phone. I've already ruined that, haven't I? Yeah. Find the PS3 and throw it into the bin. <laughs> Move up N64. There we go. Where it belongs? In the freaking bin. All right, so there we go. We move on to 2013. More recent history for us here. Mm. With the PlayStation 4. Um, it's, it kind of did pretty well on release off the back of Microsoft initially announcing the Xbox One with some pretty shitty practices. Yeah, um, they bunny hopped on the bloody, on the bad practices of the uh, Xbox, didn't it? Yeah, so Sony did pretty well from the off for being a bit more customer-friendly to start with. I mean, the Xbox One did dial it back and become a normal console, but it hurt it at the beginning. But anyway, the PlayStation 4, it's again, runs on Blu-rays. It's got a bigger hard drive, nicer graphics, all the usual sort of thing. Um, it's quite hard to talk about the current run of consoles 
in that way because obviously we don't know what's coming next, do we? Mm. But the Dual Shock Four controller was good. It's a natural evolution, apart from that random touchpad thing. I don't really see the point in there. And the big light does tend to eat the batteries a bit. Oh, but, the thing underneath where you can give it a reach around. Stu, I've never given my consoles a reach around. You give my controller a reach around, and it got like a touch thing on the, on the, on the underside. No, oh, it's on the, it's on the, it's on the front. front. No, I thought it was on the back. <laughs> it's no. on the top where the old uh, start select buttons used to be. Oh, yeah. Button. yeah. If you ever come around my house, Stu, and I see you trying to give my controllers a reach around, they'll be fucking trouble. <laughs> Only the N64 <laughs> likes reach arounds. That's why it's got that button. Oh, yeah. And that pointless third arm on it. Uh, I thought there was a button on the back of it for some reason. So you, so you could squat on it in 64. Are you sure well, there's not? Sense. Are you sure there's not? No. I play on one most days, and I've not encountered this touchscreen button. I think you've made it up. Maybe you just don't know it's so. well, yeah, It just makes all my games easier. Shit, yeah. I've been missing yeah. out on this. <laughs> like Abe's Odyssey years ago, and when, when, when we worked out you could control possessed slicks. We got yeah. halfway through the game and beat some puzzles where you had to use possessed slicks by then. How the hell did we manage that? <laughs> but there you go. Anyway, by the end of last year, how many PS4s do you reckon have been sold worldwide? Ooh. It's a lot. Ooh. More than Ooh, a lot. 94 million. That's pretty good going. Not sure if that's counting the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Waste of Space variant as well, which is what the Slim is, let's face it. Um, games released for the PS4, though. Oh, God of War 2018, which has been very critically received as a good thing yeah. or something. About gr- gr- yeah, so on. Gritty old beard, Kratos, looking after his kid as he he's, sort of uh, he's, he's a lot history. thicker than he was as well. Oh, Ryan, <laughs> you put that thought back on. Oh, he's, li- he's giving me that look. Listeners, he's giving me that look. We'll be back after this um, technical difficulties message. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Stu, he's modelled his appearance on Kratos from God of War. He has. He's like Kratos mixed with a mild-mannered IT guy. Yeah. IT Kratos. Mm. Kratos <laughs> camping, mate. I was, I was doing a bald head and beard way before Kratos showed up. So you were around in ancient ancient Greece, etc. were you? Yeah. 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 No, you weren't. No, I know you weren't. No, no you was. fucking weren't. You fucking fucker. Was. I'll burn your fucking testicles. I what? was talking about bag, ball bags. <laughs> No, I said I burned them. You, oh. you, you said it. Fe- you, you said it fetishistically. I said it as a threat. It was so fetishistically. Is that a word? It is now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, if it is or not. Also, other games that came out: Horizon Zero Dawn, which was a pretty cool um, post-apocalypse robot bow and arrow murdering game. Oh yeah, with a cool little uh, mystery to solve. I enjoyed that one. That was a really good game. Very well made. And the robots went <laughs> when you killed robots them. Robots with the bow and arrow in the weak parts, of course. Yeah, explosive Why arrows. robots design the weak parts? Because it's the kind of robot evolved over centuries, and they've got gas cannons, canisters for the flamethrowers and stuff on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, when well, you can, they go, blah, 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 and those sparks go off when they die. Sick. Uh, it's got Spider Man that came out. Apparently, that's good. Not played it yet. Yeah, it's, not, played it. it's like the Arkham games, but Spider Man. And you just zip around and go, oh, my spider sense is tingling. All the time. It's supposed to be good. That's definitely what Spider-Man sounds like. It's got Bloodborne, which is one of those Souls games, which is where you play um, like a man in a tricorn hat uh, called a hunter, and you have to go and kill really ridiculously difficult monsters in a really ridiculously drab and gritty universe. People love that game. I think it's okay, but I got bored of it. Maybe it's just because I'm not patient enough to learn really intricate tactics and die every five minutes. But that's just me. Also Uncharted 4, which was a very big sort of success story. People love a bit of Uncharted 4. They get very excited about it. Very frothy around the chops they do. <laughs> As Drathan Nate comes back and suddenly goes, Nathan! Oh, that. Then they read a tomb or something. So PS4. Um, do you want me to... I mean, I'm the one that owns one. Do you want to talk about what my thoughts on it? Yeah. I think it's a very good console. It's got a good range of exclusives. Good control. Sorry, Ryan was just cleaning his face like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yeah, sorry. Like it's like pouring at his face. It's, weird. <laughs> it's so strange. Uh, I think the heat's doing things to it. Yes, it's in heat. <laughs> oh, oh, so yeah, good controller, good range of games. I had a little bit of technical difficulty with mine early on, but it mended itself like magic. Oh, right. It used to just eject the CD mid game, which oh. was a bit distracting. But it stopped doing that after a while, so that was okay. Pretty decent offers on the store and stuff like that. It might have to be another 5 out of 5 for me, guys. I'll be honest with you. I love my PS4. I've still got the original model one, and it plays most games absolutely fine. No trouble with it after that little issue cleared up. So I'm going to say 5 out of 5. 
Uh, Stu, you've played one, haven't you? Yeah. It had the same thing as as the PS3, where it's just every time I tried to play something, it'd want an update. Like, every time. But the difference, fail. difference was on the PS4 is that you can play over the updates until they're installed. That was a massive improvement for me. Yeah, but it was every time. That was a time. game changer. Give it another try, and then it's like, well, you're going to have to update me first. Like, well, maybe I'll just turn you off and play on the Xbox instead. See, I don't, I don't find that. Mine very rarely updates now. Unless it was just went through a phase of it when you had one. PSN. I've never been a fan of PSN. I've always preferred Xbox so be, Live. Yeah, we'll discuss we'll discuss Xbox Live a bit more in a bit, but I would agree with you on that one, to be fair. But then I don't do much online gaming, so it doesn't really matter to me that much. I mean, I've not played any of the big exclusives, but yeah, I appreciate that they, they look decent. But I'm not going to go out my way to... I wasn't going to go out my way to, to buy them. That's fair enough, then, yeah. No, that, that, that's a good, balanced, balanced, sensible review, that's true. How many how many shots would you give it out of five, then? i give it four. Well, yeah, respectable. Respectable. Right? Ryan? Mm. Ryan looks like he's falling asleep. No, I'm thinking, because I've never, <laughs> I've never touched a PS4. Well, that's fair. I mean, but, uh, but, just go off historical importance. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but as long as you can look at it with, like I say, un- un- no, so the, logic. So they've updated the controller the, the, the previous one they got they still got this is it still got the six axis crap mm, no it's not bothering me that anymore i don't think yeah, see, so they're learning I'm from not, the I, mistakes i've never noticed mine do it anyway um yeah. i would agree with you craig um however with the psn not being as good as it should be for this era of gaming i'll have to give it a four that's fair enough very respectable so i believe that puts it on the thick tier yeah yeah all right, it's, good. it's thick, just like grey sauce. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Mm. <laughs> thick. So now let's jump to the final uh, member of the big four in the console wars, uh, which is released by a humble startup company. Nobody had heard of it before. <laughs> called, Micro- called Microsoft. Um, and it was released in 2002. What happened in 2002? Begging your pardon? The company. Same. Yeah, named after your penis. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to keep bringing it up? The therapy was starting to work. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. Technical difficulties again. The, the Microsoft, named after Stu's brain, Xbox, which came out in 2002. And it was announced in 2000. And it was, uh, it was a bit of a beefy old powerhouse, wasn't it, compared to its rivals? It was. It's thick old console. Even, it was. Even, very thick. Even the PS2 had to go and hide. So yeah, in 2002, it had Xbox Live launched, which was the first of its kind. Online yeah. online sort of... Uh, was it a storefront back then, or was it just for online play? No, it was just online games back then. Oh, well, there so we go. Mainly uh, it was... Uh, uh, what was the main game on it? Rainbow Six. Uh, Rainbow Six 3. Ah, okay. Uh, then Rainbow Six... Uh, not Vegas. Broken Spear. Mech Assault, that was online. Project Gotham. I didn't want to think we've reached Stu's wheelhouse here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and also, it was the first console to be designed from the ground up to support internet connection. It was. Because the, 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 the Dreamcast had a 28K modem, but that's not really good for much. Uh-huh. Apart from throwing at someone. And the PS2 had an add-on thing to connect it to the internet, but I don't think it was widely available. I don't yeah. ever, ever seen one. It plugged into the back. So. It, there wasn't much that was really compatible with it. So I think Twisted Metal Black was compatible with it. SOCOM as well, I think. Oh, yeah. It's like packaged with it, I think. Yeah, that's got, right. It's a bit poo. got a headset, the network card, and SOCOM. Yeah, yeah that's right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, so pundits say that it was the Xbox Live that gave Microsoft its sort of early foothold in the battle and yeah. sort of put it onto the level of, well, punching up against the PS2, wasn't it, really? The, so, so it had a lot of... It had a good few popular games. It also it? had uh, four controller slots. It did. It, it, a bit of, it, it, it was like the Dreamcast and the N64. It had it had it was ready for four player gaming from the off, which is cool, guys. We're always down for that. And you could link a load of them together with Ethernet cables. Yes, yeah, so anyone who's listened to the split screen episode will hear Stuart Ryan talking about how they used to uh, have system link parties, yeah. which would always end in an orgy. They, they mentioned it on the episode. Stu goes into a lot of detail. It's fucking weird. It's like <sighs> the fall of Rome. The fall of Master Chief's Rome. So, yeah, the Xbox was undeniably a bit of a game changer. It kind of, if the PS2 had uh, kicked Sega to the ground and called it names, then the Xbox just went and sat on it until it died with its superior console weight. 
It did have a horrible control pad that was like a giant plate with buttons on it, but they did release a refined version, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It was only around for a bit. The big, the big chunky one. I believe the chunky boy is called the um, Duke controller. Yeah, the Duke. Yeah, <laughs> and it was the Duke Nukem of controllers, and it was replaced by, like, say, a more sensible one, which I think was the probably the basis for Xbox controllers going forward, wasn't it? Yeah, it had, it had six buttons on the top and only two triggers. Yes, didn't it? Yeah, it lost some buttons, didn't it? Had bl- yeah, it had black and white, but then... They got uh, moved when to we the get, shoulders, didn't they? Yeah, they moved to the shoulders for the... And then became back buttons. Yeah. That's the evolution. Evolution happening, those guys, yeah. of, the, of a console. Because the, the Duke had six buttons as well and only two triggers. Yeah. And then they all moved around to the, the back. I think it's because... Microsoft, the Duke controller was designed by a third party company. And Microsoft gave them no time to figure out how to do it, and they'd never made a controller before. Uh, Hence the um, Duke controller. And the guy that was testing it had really massive hands. Like I've, heard, I've, heard he was Sas- I've heard he was Sasquatch. They went into the forests of Canada and made Sasquatch test it. Okay, dokie, guys. And he tested it. Why oh, are you waving to me, Ryan? I can see you. It's because I'm <laughs> trying to get comfy. Go on. By waving to me. You yeah. guys are weird. All right, so games released for the uh, Xbox, worth mention. Halo's 1 and 2, of course, in which you play a big, beefy boy in armor called the Master Chief, who doesn't say a lot, and he fancies an AI called Cortana. Mm. Um, you know what he says more than? You know what he says more than? What? Who he says more than? Who? He speaks more than Gordon Freeman. Yeah, everyone speaks more than that idiot. Uh, you know um, that. Yeah, very true. And you fight colorful aliens in space who have genuine real tactics and behave as a unit. And what do uh, elites say? Like that. And then you can go and kill them with the super shotgun. That's doom. And there's the little grunts that run away from you. Once you kill the leader, they all run away, which I always thought was very clever when I played on Halo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you always send the grunts in first while the elites stood at the bottom. It was also the only console to get a port of Knights of the Old Republic, which was the Star Wars RPG, mm-hmm. which was awesome. Good. Back in the day, it was awesome. That twist, guys. That twist. Who would have thought that Darth Vader was Luke's father all along? <laughs> no, it's another twist. But anyway, it was really good. Uh, very customizable. Got a lightsaber. If you press, I had it on PC. If I pressed X, it went one, 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 and spun the lightsaber around. Yeah. Completely pointless, but it looked cool. Yeah, you could run around um, just spamming it. You go, one, 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 like that. That's what I did it yeah. a lot. Uh, there was Farblay. Fable. Yeah, that's the one, Fable. Yeah. That was released by famous madman Peter Molyneux, which everyone talks like from a Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah, uh, but there's a lot of things he promised that never actually made it into Fable. It yeah. is Peter Molyneux. He does it for every game. He's famous like, for it. something about planting and planting bloody acorn seeds and you, over the time of the game you can watch the tree grow. Oh, he's a complete madman. Yeah. Whereas, complete madman. Whereas you just have a time skip. First half of the game, you're a child, then it time skips and you're an adult that it time skips and you're really old yeah and you finish the game and you're 65 whereas everybody else is the same age that was a bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> finish the game way. you're a buff old man and then everyone else <laughs> hasn't changed yeah. oh nice well, if, you it, you good, yeah. if you played it as good you're a buff old angel man yeah <laughs> buff old angel if you were evil you actually aged slower so I was like I played it as evil it's, until the bit where he sacrificed his sister I thought nah I'm not, gonna, I'm not that evil. Was that your redemption? Yeah, man? so I saved it, and then I, you go automatically really, really good, and then I was old. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like 47 when I finished, when I saved it, and then I went fully good, and I was 65. I was like, what's going on here? Okay, I've never played much Fable myself. I couldn't get into it, but that's fair enough. Um, you also had a good. good port of Jade Empire, which was Obsidian and Bioware's other RPG. It's in the same engine as Knights of the Old Republic, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was yeah. set all around Eastern Eastern mythology. So like ninjas and samurai and yeah, like and Japanese demons. You didn't have good and dark. You had open palm or closed fist. Yeah, that was a good game. I really enjoyed that. I never completed well, it, though. Though. I had it on PC. I liked the character that was a little girl. And then, when, and then inside it was like this like, killer demon. This like massive demon. That was a cool character. There was also a really good port, very ambitious, of Morrowind. And if you if you if you're a long time listener of Shark Select, ah yes, you'll know our thoughts on Morrowind. <laughs> I love Morrowind, as yeah. broken as it was, broken janky masterpiece, <sighs> a beautiful mess, much like Stu. Let's talk marking the original Xbox. I'm going to go last this time because I've got comparatively very little experience to use it. So Ryan, let's have your your thoughts first. I did enjoy the Xbox. Had a lot of uh, good games, good ports. 
There was no updating issues or anything like that. Xbox Live was fantastic piece of engineering. That's fair. What? It was a it was a big beast. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on the controllers? Did, was it? A, a, a... I I enjoyed the original, not the Duke, the one they released after that with the six buttons. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It worked well. It was comfortable. Fair enough. Uh, and if you did come round for a Sister Link party and you were the last one there, you ended up with the big controller. Oh, like a punishment. Yeah. So I had its uses. Yeah. Okay. But I'm torn actually between a four and a five. Um, Ooh, okay, well, fair enough. Just go with your heart. That's what we always say on Shout Select. Go with your shirt. Go with your shirt. Is it? Is it a five? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll let you think. I'll go to Stu. Stu, what's your thoughts? Hmm. Oh, oh, God, someone's killed Stu. Shout Select is now recruiting a third host. <laughs> if you think you've got what it takes, why not DM us on our Shout Select Twitter account at Shout Select Pod? Don't bother, don't bother adding at Digestive One. I think he's just died. Yeah. Ryan, uh, who, who should we have as the third host? I'm thinking Pixie, maybe. Should we get a Pixie, Pixie Gaming podcast on? Yeah, oh, no. oh, we'll do it live. Oh, oh, Stu's better. Yay! Damn it, for fuck's sake. Thanks, Stu. You're all right, mate. What's your thoughts on the Xbox, though? That's what got me into online gaming, like Rainbow Six and yep. Mech Assault, Project Gotham. And then you had all the decent local multiplayer ones, like Flat Out, Halo, Halo 2, I think. That Forza. Was, oh, yeah, Forza, yeah. Oh, yeah, the original Forza, Forza that's true. Yeah, Forza 2, yeah. Oh, wait, it was Forza 2 360? No, Forza 2 was 360. Yeah, it was just Forza 1. Uh, yeah, Forza 1, so, yeah. I think Halo Halo 2 was Xbox Live, wasn't it? Yeah. And that had bump mapping, if I remember correctly. Yes, did, first yeah. game to have bump mapping, and it looked beautiful back in the day. Yeah. I think Doom was on the original Xbox, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Doom 3. Yeah, that had yeah. bump mapping as well. Yeah. Um, otherwise known as the, wor- the worst Doom, but still good. Yeah, first so, hour was good. It's a, definitely a, a 5, a shot. To- All right. She's going for the chat to what's Ryan's thoughts? What, what's your score? Yeah, Ryan? think about it. I had good good games as well and that. I'm, yeah, yeah, five, I think. It was a good groundbreaking console on its release. Okay. Now it's time for my judgment. Um I didn't play a lot of it. For what I played, Halo was really good. Halo two was really good. I enjoyed the campaigns. We had we had to laugh with the multiplayer. The controllers were inoffensive. I think I tried both. I didn't have too much trouble with either of them, really. And I've got little stupid hands. So what does that tell you? I think, honestly, it was a good console. I just didn't get enough experience with it. I'm going to say, I'm going to go with a three out of five for me. So, Ryan, mathematically, where does that put it, please? There's the math master on Shout Select. Uh, thick. Well, with your uh, tactical voting. It's not tactical voting. That was an honest review. I've, I've not played it as much. Come on, guys. That's only fair. I never played a PS4, but I agreed with your score. You didn't have to agree with my score. (laughs) (laughs) Right, let's move on then. Thank God, I've got to put it in the box. So we're going for thick, yeah? Yeah. (sighs) Injustice. I wasn't going to to give it a five, was I? I've not played it as much as you guys. I've played some of Halo. (laughs) Come on, guys. I'm not fine with it. I'm not cheating the system here. I'm fine with it. All, all, all the Xbox... Were the two in shot here? No. no. All, the, all the OG Xbox was was the uh, groundwork for yeah. what comes next. And to be fair, it's in the same tier as the PS1 and the PS4 and the... Whatever that thing is. Oh, I put it in the back, so it's not meant to be in there yet. That would, that would jump the gun. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. So the next one, very interesting. I think we're going to get a lot of discussion out of this console, listeners. In 2005. What happened in 2005, everywhere? I was up very early in the morning. Because I did actually work you, on days that, that time. Because you shit the but, bed. But no. Oh, okay. We queued up for the release of said console you're about to mention. What? We were there. The Xbox 360, or as some people call it, the 360. No one's ever called it that. <laughs> the Xbox 360. Uh, Xbox 2. It was a worldwide launch across 2005 and six, and it was initially in short supply in many regions. Yeah, it was sold out for ages, wasn't it? Yeah, they, so they, they shit the bed a bit there early on, didn't they? Earliest version of the console, and don't I know about this, suffered from a high failure rate with the Red Ring of Death curse. Yeah. Which is where I think the processor well. fused to the heat sink or something. Yeah. Under heat, because it had a massive fan that sounded like a jet engine to keep it cool, and it didn't work. I got through five consoles five. due to the Red Ring of Death. Five. five. You can't tell me that's right. One, two of the cheap. No. Well, technically, I've got the cheaper model. Is the it, arcade. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't have enough money for a good model. Uh, that had the Red Ring of Death. They, they repaired it me, sent it me back. Red Ring of Death again. Fucked it off. Got an Elite. That had a Red Ring of Death twice. And then I think I gave one to Tim and then got another second-hand one from somewhere. 
that got a red ring of death. So that's five red rings of death. <laughs> and then I got the Slim, which never had a red ring of death. The Slim was lovely. The Slim's yeah. a lovely boy. Um, it had things like detachable hard drives. Yeah. So if you spent good. a bit more, you could get a hard drive because the memory card was woefully inadequate. Like, the memory card may as well have not existed. Did it have a memory card? Yeah, it did. I've got one somewhere. A 32 megabyte memory card. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. And the cheaper models, like I had, came with a wired control pad earlier, which people now like for PC gaming. Yes, mine's so, uh, my uh, my PC gaming at the moment is done exclusively on any ones that require controllers, so not exclusively. <laughs> Let me just start again. <laughs> All right, go again. My PC gaming consists of playing on a um, Xbox 360 controller, and it's a limited edition red one. Ooh, wired, well, and it was uh, wired, yeah. Like mm. If you spent a bit more, you could get a charging dock, which came with rechargeable batteries. Yeah, and it's a plug and plug and play. Plug yes. and charge, whatever it's called. So you That's... plugged it in, and you could charge it while playing. They also had a, hu- a useful feature. I don't think the original Xbox had this, where the wired controller, where if someone accidentally walked across the room and snagged the wire, there was a snap-off plug thing halfway across it. Yes, you didn't pull your Xbox out. Yes, which was a very clever design. So bravo, Microsoft, bravo. It had a DVD player built in. Kind of missed the boat a bit with the. It did, I think late, did later ones have a ha, those HD DVDs? HD yeah. DVDs. Them for it. It's like it was the rival, wasn't it? And it was an adapter. Yeah, it rivaled the, right. the Blu-ray, uh, and Xbox m- mistakenly went for the a- HD DVD adapter for their uh, 360, which was a waste of time. Uh, and obviously, they got discontinued. So they released a slim model in 2010, and then another version called the Xbox E. In 2013, what's the Xbox E? You want to see one of them? Yeah, it looks like a Xbox One. Oh right, okay. Mine was just the slim model. Uh, it was pretty cool. It's very cool. In fact, I love my Xbox 360 slim. Xbox Live was an evolution again on top of the original Xbox. You could now that was a very big storefront. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the blades? Yeah. On the OG Xbox 360, the the menu to navigate the systems was these blades. Where it went, oh yeah, it was yeah, all yeah. different colours. So I had mine hooked up to AOL broadband, which is gash, for uh, about a year, and I could never, it could never, I couldn't connect it to the broadband. So it was all like the basic software. And then once I plugged it in, once I got new broadband, and it went live, I had five billion updates, which it did in about five minutes. PS3 and got this all new, this all new HUD, including little avatars. Yeah, the avatar thing that was a bit weird. It was weird, and I'm ashamed to say to this day that I actually wasted money on clothes for it. I did, it's sure, I dressed mine like Iron Man. Yeah, yeah they, they forced the avatar thing on us. I wasn't having it. I, didn't, I, didn't, I think that was just to go with the bloody Wii Mii's. Well, of course thought. it was, yeah. It was direct competition to the Mii. Yeah. Because everyone tried to jump on Nintendo's bandwagon at least a little bit at that point in history. Yeah. Um, and speaking of which, that would bring us on to the Xbox Connect. Yes, which was the camera. How would you describe it, right? Like, well, it was a reality it, thing, wasn't it? Well, no, it was a camera that tracked your movement, so you didn't need a con- you, you with a controller. That's yeah. right, so you need a massive room to do it. Yeah, so, and it had to be well lit. Yeah, so it, it was limited. But it was a, it was a nice prototype. Yeah. I remember. Uh, we had, had the Connect set up for a New Year's party once, and Mate Tube came round, and he was doing the 100-metre hurdles or something, <laughs> and he was running. <laughs> and he, he, had, he, had, he was dressed as the Zohan. Yeah, so, I remember And this. he was running, and his bollocks fell out. Yes, there was some, <laughs> and, and of which I, I, won the, I won the race because his balls fell out in front of me, Nan. No, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was a very awkward New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Hashtag thank you, Microsoft. I think the best thing about the 360, which maybe we need to mention, though, is its control pad. It had a beautiful control pad. Yeah, I still use it to this day. Well, many PC gamers do. Yeah, just run, just nicely positioned sticks. Yeah, the triggers are very good. The triggers were nice, clunky triggers. And yeah, that was a wonderful controller, I've got to say. Probably my favourite controller of all time, if I'm to be honest. Mm. Some games that were famous on the 360, the Gears of War series, about really thick boys with massive yeah. thick boy necks that went around cutting up grey thick boys. It's just a lot of thick boys in that game. Uh, no uh, wonder Ryan liked it. Thick boys of war, innit? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, Crackdown 1 and 2, in which you were uh, probably a thick boy again, uh, but you could jump really high and you had a Inspector Gadget car or something. I didn't really like that game very much. It was a bit shallow for me. Fable 2 and 3, which, again, more Fable, more Guy Ritchie-voiced yeah. people. Uh, if there was a third game, it had a really stupid plot where King Michael Fassbender was being, hor- being horrible to everyone, but only because yeah. he wanted to get money in the treasury to fight a demon. Yeah, but he didn't yeah. bother explaining that to anyone. 
Yeah. If he just explained it, everyone would have given him the money. Like, yeah, mate, yeah. you're trying to save us. You're a hero. Instead, he's like, I have to persecute people. Like, what All you need idiot? to do in Fable 3 is buy real estate at the start of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can make all the good choices that cost money and save, and then if make people cost happy lives. But because uh, you've got so much money in your treasury, it doesn't matter. Just pay for it yourself. Just yeah. pay for the yeah, uh, just the whole got, thing. Yeah. yeah. Another best selling game apparently on the 360 was Ace Combat Six Fires of Liberation. I fucking love that game. It's so cheesy. Yeah. It's Ace Combat, so you fly around in the jet fighter shooting things in unfeasible situations, like you fight a giant like airship thing which is a lot of spewing jets out of it and stuff yeah. uh, I said it's got a really daft anime storyline which doesn't make any sense <laughs> and really bad voice acting go and dance with the angels and it was amazing huh? <laughs> yeah, you heard oh it was so good I loved that game and of course I had four, I put Forza 2 and 3 but was Forza 4 in it as well um... no Forza 4 was one. Oh, was it yeah yeah well the Forza games were very good we had some good online racing championships on that yeah. that's probably the longest I've, I've ever stuck with an online game playing those championships with, yeah. with you lot. Uh, I wasn't very good at them until the last series, right? It was GT cars, and my four GT was unstoppable, and then we got, all got bored halfway through. Uh, Halo 3 as Hashtag well. Woodstock was robbed. Uh, Halo 3? O- Halo 3 ODST? Yes, Halo 3 and, and Reach. And Reach. I say Reach, Reach was probably the, the best. Ones, yeah, yeah, Reach was the best Halo game. It's not even got the Master Chief in it, and it's my favourite one. Because the, has- the Master Chief isn't really that strong a character. The universe is fantastic, but he's not that strong a character. So, yeah, that's probably my summary of the 360. Anything actually you guys want to mention that I might have forgotten? There was actually, there were like three controllers on them, three controllers, three versions of the console on release, because there was the arcade. Yes. And I had core. no hard drive on it. There was the core, and then. Which did the, have a hard drive. Yeah. Premium. And the, uh, and the then premium? Premium, and that had like premium, a silver yeah. dish. Silver yeah, disc I remember. And then the Elite came out afterwards with the HDMI. I remember that. That was like a game changer, wasn't it? I remember because I had this little old video com- VHS combi telly CRT in my room for years. And the first couple of years playing on 360 was on a, a standard definition CRT TV. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But when I finally could afford my own HD telly, which is a n- nasty 27 inch plasma, but it was cool back then. When I plugged it in, fucking hell, the HDMI was like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, when I got an, an LED HD TV and played Metro Last Light on it, that was amazing. It's like I was really in the Moscow underground with the tits of these men. It was amazing. Um, so, who wants to go first? First, scoring the 360. Do you want me to do it again? Yeah, mm-hmm. can, yeah. So, best controller ever made. Massive library of games. Very quick to update. Xbox Live was pretty good. Yeah, I think I had a pretty fair subscription system, didn't it? It was like 20 quid a year or something. Forty years. Was it? Yeah. Oh, it's silver and gold though. Oh, so, yeah. Silver and gold, wasn't there? Gold is where you could play online games, and silver was where you could just use the store and stuff. Yeah. Didn't it introduce cloud saving? Yeah, cloud save was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that that came later though, didn't it? Towards the end, as I yeah. as I yeah. think. Yeah. Say, add the detachable hard drive. You could really customize towards your budget, couldn't you? Early on with it. Yeah. I think by the time it got to the slim, it was all built in anyway. But that was towards the end of its life, so. Fair play. They've refined the technology. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shock you guys who think I'm a Sony fanboy. I'm gonna say five out of five, even though it, it kept, five of my consoles died. Mm. That I loved it so much that I kept playing them. Well, so, there, there you yeah. go. Five out of five for the Xbox 360 for me. Shout to. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, I agree with you there. It was a bit dodgy with its uh, red, ring, red ring of death, but to prove that you go out and buy another one. And another one and another one just shows how good it was. Exactly. What's your what was your favourite game for it, Ray? Uh Halo Reach, I think. Fair play. I don't know what mine was, there was too many. <laughs> oh, Singularity was good. Yeah, I've still got that and, on PlayStation on PC. Well it wasn't exclusive, but that was a fucking good game. Shoot, what's your score for the three sixty? My little friend. Uh, I was gonna say four, just because of the three Red Ring of Death. Yeah, so what, what would you say? What go with your heart? Go with your shirt. What do you say? I have spent the most time on any console on a 360 thinking about it. Yeah, so was, probably the was, same with me. It was a really long generation as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, well, from 2005 to 2013. Eight yeah. years. Um, so, yeah, probably, yeah, five. There we go. Then we have our second chart tier. Well, that's the that's the top. That's the highest of the chart tier, though. What's higher than the PS2? Yeah, but with the, the PS2, got, sharp got four in it. Sharp well, no, star. That's, that, the the thing you, they're both in the tier though. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're both in the tier. But if you had to oh, look into the tier, if we split the tiers into split, smaller tiers, still 
yeah, if you split the tier, the Xbox would be right at the top of the chart tier. No, that's fair. That's because fair. we all scored it five. I think you're right there. Which leaves one more console from the big four. It's the Xbox One slash One X, but we'll, we'll stick with the Xbox One and we'll talk a bit about the One X, right? Which was 2013 as well, because it's released at pretty much the same time as the PS4, because mm. they were like neck and neck in the market. Unfortunately, they had a really bad release because Microsoft turned into some kind of totalitarian state and said, you have to have your connect wired up all the time. It has to be on standby so it can spy on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to have a constant internet connection. Yep, you can't play... Um, can't trade games. Yep, you can't trade... You can't use used games. Yeah. So they really fucked themselves over. Yeah, you the couldn't free own games, could you? Because the, because the yeah. PS3 got bat- got battered in the last generation, they... Well, they they went in there arrogant, much like the PS3 did the generation before. They they were arrogant. They thought yeah. because they had better hardware or whatever, they could shit all over Sony, and it didn't work like that, guys. You've got to get your audience, which is why Shark Select loves his audience. We love you, Ooh. audience. Is that good? Does that, yeah. that sound natural? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So say it was mainly. I mean, it was a massive console again. It really went back to the the OG Xbox design philosophy: make a massive console. And people will come on the console. <laughs> in yeah. in the, have, you, have you ever you ever done that in your console, Stu? No, no. Be honest. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, we go. Uh, the controller also got a bit of a regrade. I never really, never really used a, a one controller. How do I have one. The one controller is a lot better than the 360 one. No. I don't rate it. Than the, yeah, the 360. That's yeah. a split decision. Well, Mine doesn't well, apparently. Like the Xbox One Elite controller is a thing to behold. It's like the pinnacle of controllers. Yeah, they really went to town on that one, apparently, didn't they? Yeah. Was it the Xbox One that also made an accessibility controller yes. for yeah. disabled people? That's yeah. a really yeah. good idea. That deserves kudos, to be fair. Yeah, it's a massive controller that fits to yeah, you can sort like of almost any customize it, can't yeah. you? That's a really good idea. It's got like foot paddles and stuff like that. That's a very good idea, so I like that. Well done, Xbox One, for forward thinking there. After that's uh, that's uh, Jill Bates for you, that isn't it? Jill Bates, Kathy yeah. Bates's sister, and Gil ba- Gil Bates, yeah. Bill Gates. Fuck's sake, yeah. Bill Gates's secret brother, who designed Xboxes from his secret lab mm. deep in the Siberian wastes. I might have made this up. Um, as I recall, didn't they kind of really push for the Xbox One to be anything but a games console to release? Saying you can play Netflix and you can yeah. watch football on it. Yeah, it had a really weird launch. Yeah. I mean, all the marketing was about snapping like <laughs> your sports channel to the corner of the screen while you're still playing Xbox and stuff. Or yeah, snapping, what kind of YouTube and stuff? It's like what Xbox. kind of wanker designed the marketing for that console? I don't know. What kind of it is a games console? Tosser. And there's everything you can do besides gaming on it. Well, like yeah. Well, Sony were just like you could play games on this, and th- that was it. That's yeah, all. Yeah. It's like, what were the hell were they thinking? They're trying to make it like a multimedia hub, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Trying so to make every it. household needs. But you don't do they? Because, well, smart, t- yeah, basically, smart TVs. Basically, smart TVs do it all, anyway. People have got Chromecasts now. It's just... Yeah. Uh, Chromecast. love my Chromecast. Anyway, the console can also play Blu-ray discs. So I guess Sony finally stopped being naughty and horrible to him and let him have some Blu-ray technology, yeah. which is nice. That's probably not how it works. Please don't tell me off. I don't know how capitalism works. Don't shout at me. <laughs> um, yeah, the Kinect, so which had to be shipped with it originally, they got rid of it after a while. Yeah, they just cut the losses with that. Yeah, they realised they were wasting their time with that one and fucked it off. And since then, they've released the Xbox One S, which is a little teeny, not teeny, but it's certainly a bit smaller. Uh, again, all right, it's a slim one, whatever. And they released the One X, which is the most powerful gaming console ever made. Yeah. Does anyone care? Yeah, Shoe I do. Cares. Shoe cares. Shoe cares. I mean, would you kick off if someone replaced it with an Xbox One? Yeah. Big time. Why so? Why so? Describe. Because I like my 4K gaming and the 60 frames per secondness. And he likes his sumptuous, sumptuous graphics. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So, anything you guys can tell me about it that I don't know, because I've I've had very little experience with the Xbox One. So, I had one when I traded it in. There we go. Ryan has spoken. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> I, I had one, right? Uh, mm. Because my uh, PC at the time was not where it is today. Yep. And I upgraded my PC to something much better. So 
it wasn't being used, so I sold it to a friend. Fair enough. And then I play everything that comes out on the Xbox One on, with PC. A, on PC with a 360 controller, because I'm just like that. Which undermines the exclusivity scene of the Xbox One. Well, it's still exclusive, because it's still Microsoft, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, Stu, what's your thoughts on the one the one overall there? Yeah, it's, it's just it's evolved so much over time. Like the yeah, like yeah. The, the original it. the home screen, however you want to call it, is like yeah. it's, it's something completely different now. And then you've got Game Pass as well. Yes, Game Pass. This is good, isn't it? Every month you get like an extra. Well, they just spring one you every now and again. You get like a week's warning. It's like oh, this is coming to Game Pass next week. Is it like a game streaming service? Easily, it's just a um, yeah. But you down- you get to download it, but yeah. Yeah, you download okay. them, and then you just play them whenever you want. Is it subscription based? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's at the <laughs> moment it's eight ninety nine a month. Yeah, uh, and then you can get the ultimate, which includes your Xbox Live and Game Pass and Game Pass for PC in one subscription. Which I well, think okay. is ten ninety nine. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Well, I've got point. it. That's pretty cool. I've got it for PC. Okay, so some games that came out with the One X, or the One, sorry, is Halo 5, which I don't think was rated as well. Guardians. As uh, the level editor was like, Forge World was really tiny. Yeah, okay. So that's pretty weak then, if we're to be quite honest. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, you play that one? I downloaded it, but I never played it. <laughs> you, you could be Freddie Mercury in it. I know that much. Uh, there's a game called Quantum Break, which had live action cutscenes. Yeah, it's like a that. film, wasn't it? Like a TV series. It had uh, little finger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, him! Bloody little finger, little lying bastard, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Was that any good? I had the guy that plays uh, the Ice Man from X Men films. Yeah, as well. yeah, that's who you played as. Oh, he played as them both. Um, okay, it's okay. So it's like it's, a, it's like a TV show. Yeah. So you do you, you do episodes, and then next, like it's like next time on Quantum Break, and then it'll do like a little teaser for some reason. Ah, uh, yeah, like it like Alan Wake did on the. 360. Oh, my God. Shut All right. Um, Gears of War 4. Have you guys played that one? Of course, no. Ryan has. It's full of thick boys. No, no. What? I've no. played Gears 1 to 3, and 3 was a bit weak for me, so I, stopped, I just thought that's interesting. Okay, l- let me ask you a question then. Are there any Xbox One exclusives that you guys think are very good? Because you've not been very positive about any of those. Forzas? Yeah, okay. Forzas, that's fair play. Pretty in-depth racing games. I yeah, I've that- just got Forzas. Forza Horizon 4. Yeah, it's good. Isn't okay, it? fair enough. Any others? Mm. Um, trying to think. There's not a massive amount of exclusive on Xbox. Yeah, that's sad, really, because if it had some more, that'd be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think. It, well, that's got to change. That's changed, isn't it? Because Microsoft have been buying up game studios, haven't they? So that's what they're oh, building so on next for Scarlet. So Scarlet is that going to be the next console? The Scarlet Pimpernel. I think that's just Project its code Scarlet. name. Whatever, yeah, Project Scarlet. <laughs> I like it. Okay, then. So let's talk Marks. Again, I'm going to let one of you two go first, because I've had very little experience with this console. Me too. Go on, Stu. You're the uh, Xbox boy. Mark it for us, Stu. And we'll, I'll see where you land it. I mean, if it's just built on everything from a 360, from from my point of view. I mean, it had a, it had a shaky start, but then so did a 360. I had a PS4, and that didn't sway me. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go for a 5 again. Being okay, an Xbox fair boy. enough. Fair enough. Ryan, what's your thoughts? Uh, no, I reckon a four for me, only because the uh, my I don't feel the controller is as good as 360. Okay, and See. there's not many exclusivity on there comparable to what the PS4 has to offer. Um, but yeah, the refined they've got the Xbox Live and all that, and the games for well, like, but Xbox Live and the um, Xbox Game Pass is not. Xbox One X exclusive stuff because they've brought it all to PC as well now anyway. It's very true. It uh, yeah, they're sort stuff. of opening up Microsoft as a whole. You've got PC and Xbox coming I'll, together. I'll open up your Microsoft hole. It won't be micro when you're finished. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carry on. <laughs> so yeah, for me, I'd, give it, uh, I'd like to give it a four, I think. That's respectable. Um, for me, again, very little experience playing one, so it's going to be hard for me to judge it. So I'll go off what I know about it. It had a horrible launch with some shitty practices, market, marketing behind it and stuff. But it did get good. It's got the most powerful console in the world as one of its variants. Apparently the control pad's lovely, although I'll take Ryan's word, it's not as good as the 360, because I love the 360 pad. 
but it's got crappy exclusives. Not crappy, but you know what I mean? There's not got exclusive exclusives. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I will say crappy, because all the ones I listed, you guys are like, mm, don't know about that. So I'm going to go right in the middle, smack bang, three out of five. Safe? Fair? Mm. Yeah? Where would that put it on the chart here, Ryan? Puts it in thick. Thick? Can't go wrong with that, guys. Come on, you have to admit, that's not a bad score. Yeah. I think the system's working, guys. We're getting a real nice... Um, we're getting a real nice layout here, fair play. Right, so let's do a quick refresh of where we're up to, starting from the fart tier, all so, right down at the bottom. So just to summarise... In on the fart tier... Fuck. In on the fart tier, <laughs> we have... In last place, it's the PS3, a bag of shit. <laughs> Next up, it's the Wii U, not very good. It's the GameCube, people like it, we weren't so sure. The N64, Ryan wouldn't even take it out of the box. And finally, the Sega Saturn, it wasn't very good. Next up, it is... <laughs> it is the Metier. <laughs> I'm really mixing this up here. The Metier, featuring such unremarkable ones, according to our lives... Different people may have different opinions. It's the <laughs> Wii console by Nintendo. It's got motion controllers. Then we had the <laughs> Dreamcast, the last Sega console. It had the MUs. And then <laughs> it's, the, it's the NES slash NES slash Famicom. It saved North America. Europe was okay, like, okay, that's cool, but it's not a master system. <laughs> then we had the Switch. It's good. It's expensive. And then we've got the Sega Master System and Master System 2. It's like a NES, only it's black. And by Sega. <laughs> Next up, we've got the OK tier. The OK tier is OK. Games in the OK tier are the 16-bit rivals of the day, the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis, and the Super Nintendo! Uh, this is quite OK so far. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Ryan's favorite tier, the Thick tier. We're starting such heavy hitting bad boys as the PlayStation 4 and its arch rival, the Xbox One. And also their ancestors who were also rivals, the OG Xbox and the PS1. That was the rival. That's the, that's a generation before. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> Error. And finally, the Chartier, up at number one, in the God Spot, the Masters, the Leaders, we've got the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox 360. And that's that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, that's that. So as you can see from the list, just a bit of a, I, a analysis there, in the very top tier are the two consoles that were released just as consoles, and everything before that, we're like, oh, it's, a, it's we're heading towards the media tier, yeah, man, as it were, exactly. where it's got Netflix and streaming and all this other stuff on it. Whereas the 360 yeah. and the PS2 were just consoles. Yeah, the 360 was starting down the path. It had Netflix, I think, but you have to pay gold memberships to use Netflix on it, as I recall. But I've also noticed another pattern. It's things to do with how old we were as well. Yeah. In the the ones we remember most fondly were from our more recent years. Like the Mega Drive, I loved this ride in my childhood. That was my favourite thing ever. So there was a fire in my house. Sod my family, I'd save the Mega Drive. Mm. Uh, only now that it's it's in the OK tier, which is respectable, don't get me wrong. But uh there you go. So I think time and nostalgia has affected it as well, wouldn't you say? Mm. Okay, so that it was makes it. me want to go and uh, dig up a 360 from somewhere and get a lot of games for it, though. Makes me want to go dig up a cup. I think fuck um, it. I still got a 360 Elite knock around at yes. mum and dad's house. Let's talk about Stu's 360. Where the games are. Don't know whether we traded them all in, did we? I've have got, to see where dad's put them all. I've got 40 odd games in the drawer under the bed um, and the console. They're all nice and snug in my drawer, ready for action one day. So, that was episode two of uh, console tearing, which means there's going to be, you guessed it, Mother Truckers, episode three. So episode three is what? Uh, handheld, handheld janky consoles, and other such characters from the history of consoles. And then we've got them all, guys. We may as well go whole hog and get them all. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for listening to episode two out of three for console tears, everybody. We hope you had as much fun as we did because it's fucking hot in here and I feel like I'm going to die. Ryan, where can people find you on the internet, you bastard? Find me on Twitter at Shout Select Ryan, or you can find me on YouTube at Shout Select, where I upload videos of the um, episodes that we talk about. Ryan, that was beautiful. For the first time in your life, you sounded enthusiastic about something. Oh, bollocks.
<laughs> you out, you his character's like, dropped. He's, yeah, he loves yeah, it. His facade, yeah. his facade has broken. Everyone, he's got a heart, really. So there we go. Uh, Stu, where can we find you on the internet, you turd? On uh, Twitter at Digestive One. Oh fuck off! No, okay, carry on. I'm just joking. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dabbling on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram as well at Shards Select Pod. Yeah, just to point out, Stu now runs the Twitter account. So if you if some if some blunt comment appears spelt wrong on your replies, it's not me anymore. It's Stu. <laughs> <laughs> like some ham fisted reply comes on. Yeah, when I posted something yeah. innocuous the other day, and he came back with some response about me sucking dick, and the replies I was like, "Oh, good, <laughs> Stu's here." <laughs> Very professional. Uh, but there we go. So Stu's <sighs> running that. We don't do Twitch anymore. They both got bored of it. Uh, that's probably fair to say, right? Yeah. I wasn't an instant success, so I give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why can't I be PewDiePie? Uh, yeah. um, okay, I'm at Winstorf on Twitter with a zero instead of an O because I'm edgy. I'm also trying to start writing again on my website, Winstorf Portal at WordPress.com, where I'm starting some new short stories and whatnot. And yeah, that's about it for me at the moment. Oh, I've just done a new collab with the with Realm for that for the Notion month. Which translates to the well read mage. Sorry, guys, I lost my tongue there. I did a review of Persona 5. It's doing really well. If you like JRPGs, go and give it a read. I'll be super grateful. And I'll be your best friend and I'll buy you flowers and you can come on to my birthday party. I'll save you a come piece on, of cake. Yeah. I'll only at my birthday party. Oh, okay. And I'll are you the cake? Cake. Cacky birthday party. Yeah. Are you the oh, cake yeah. we provide the frosted? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> 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 okay, things are getting sexy again. Uh, let's round this off before things get weird. Uh, if, if you want to get in touch with us or leave a nice review on iTunes or something, you go ahead and do that. If you want to speak to us on Twitter, if you want some intelligent conversation at Winstall, if you want to have some inane, badly spelt replies, just talk to the chat. So let's go. She loves it. Uh, if you want some witty banter you can contact me contact Ryan you know how to contact everyone just find the public payphone that's ringing at 2am in your local town Saturday it will be Ryan and he will be masturbating <laughs> <laughs> and on, on, on that note let's round out another lovely episode of Shout Select say goodbye everyone bye, bye everyone, everyone.